everybody. Hi everybody. It's great to see you again at Club Today. I'm really excited for Club Today. Are you excited, Charlie? Yeah. Yeah. What's this here in front of you, Charlie? A ship. Oh, oh, it's a big ship. What's it called? Titanic. Charlie, can you tell me what is a lighthouse for? To show ships in the dark where to go. Yes, it does. And that's going to lead us into our first song, My Lighthouse. So I want you to stand up, do the actions, and let's sing. In my wrestling, in my dance, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence, you won't let go. In the questions, your truth will hold. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness. I will follow you. Whoa, my lighthouse, my lighthouse. I will trust the promise. You will carry me safe to shore. today starts off in Scotland in a little town called Houston and in 1872 which was a long time ago a young man was born his name was called John John Harper and John Harper was born into a Christian home his parents were Christians they followed the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior and from a young age John was taught from the Bible about who God's Son is how Jesus is the Son of God, how Jesus is the Saviour of the world and how Jesus is the only one who can forgive people for their sins. And at the age of 14, John got saved. He trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. 
He was sorry for all the wrong things that he had done in his life against God and he asked the Lord Jesus to forgive him. He knew that Jesus loved him. He knew that his sins were forgiven. He knew that he belonged to Jesus and he knew that he would live forever with Jesus in heaven. And so John's life changed completely. At the age of 17, John started to go out and preach. He started to go out and tell people about the Lord Jesus. The good news that Jesus is the saviour, that Jesus can forgive them for their sins. John really cared about people. By the age of 24, he was married to a young lady called Annie. And John was the pastor of a church in Glasgow. And when he first went to this church, there were 24 people there. But by the time John was leaving, a short time later, there were over 500 people in this church. He preached, he cared for people, he visited the sick, he taught people from the Bible, he went out and he told people the good news about Jesus and his church grew and grew and grew. John really did care about the people around him. He spent many hours praying and weeping for the people that were lost, the people that were far away from God because of their sin. The Bible says that all of us are born with sin in our hearts. Everyone has sinned against God. Everyone is lost and far away from God because of their sin. But the good news is that Jesus is looking for lost people. Jesus is looking for you. Jesus wants to forgive you for your sins. He wants to save you from the punishment of sin. Well, very soon, Annie, his wife, was expecting their first child and there was great excitement. And Annie said that if they had a little girl, that she wanted her to be called Annie and she would be called Nana for short. And sure enough, Annie had this baby and it was a little girl and they called her Nana. But shortly after Nana was born, Annie died. And this left John as a widower. He had this tiny little baby to look after and he had a church to look after as well. And John's sister Jessie would come and she would help look after Nana. John very soon became the pastor of a church in London and he moved there with Nana and with his sister Jessie. He was preaching, he was teaching people from the Bible, he was caring for sick people, he was a very busy man. And John had already been to America and one day he received an invitation in the post to go to America again, to go to Chicago. John had been there before and he had visited a church in Chicago and the pastor of this church was called D.L. Moody. Well, John received this invitation and he was excited to go because the last time he was in Chicago, God had really answered prayer. Many people had come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their saviour. Many people trusted in Jesus. They turned away from their sin and they asked Jesus to forgive them and their lives were now changed. And John was excited to be going back to Chicago and so he got ready for this long journey. And Nana was so excited because she had never been to America before. And John and Nana got ready to go and John's sister Jessie would travel with them. You know, John could have left to go to America a week early, but he decided to stay and to do some more work. He had other business that he needed to do, but he really felt that God wanted him to travel on the Titanic. The Titanic was this huge ship. It was called the Ship of Dreams. And at that time, it was the largest ship in the world. It had just been built and it had taken just over two years to build this ship in Belfast, which is in the north of Ireland. This ship was huge. It had never sailed to America before, but John bought tickets to sail on the Titanic, to sail on its first journey. There were many people there at the opening of the ship. There were over 100,000 people waiting to see this huge ship leave its port and travel to America. It was a great big ship. It tells us that this ship was 882 foot, foot, feet long and that it weighed 45,000 ton. On this ship there was a swimming pool, there was tennis courts, there was um, even kennels for the dogs. 
Um, it was a huge ship. There were over 900 people working on this ship. That just shows you how big this ship was. It was like a five star hotel on board this ship and many people were excited. Well, John and Nana had bought second class tickets and in those days, first class passengers were the very rich passengers. Second class passengers were sort of in the middle and the third class passengers were the poor passengers. And so John and Nana and Jessie were traveling second class. Their tickets cost over 4,000 euro. This ship was ready to set sail. There were 1,300 people who bought tickets to travel on the Titanic. That meant that there were over 2,200 people on the Titanic that day as it left the harbour. Many people were waving goodbye and I'm sure John and Nana were waving as well to all the people who were standing at the harbour. Thousands of people standing waving as this huge ship travelled to France where it would stop first. Then it would stop in Queensland which is in County Cork and today it's called Cove and then it would go west along the Atlantic Ocean until it would reach New York a few days later. Well, on board the ship, John and Nana spent time reading the Bible, praying together. As they were on board this ship, the captain, who was called Captain Smith, he was the man who was steering the ship to New York. He stood next to Bruce Esme, and Bruce Esme was the chairman of the committee who owned the Titanic. And he was so excited. He thought this ship is amazing. There is no ship like it. This is the greatest ship in the world. And he told Captain Smith that he wanted the ship to arrive a day early in New York. He wanted everyone to see how great and how grand this ship was. And he wanted people to know how fast this ship was. This was his first journey. Wouldn't it be amazing if it arrived in New York a day early? Well, Captain Smith listened and he determined that yes, they would be in New York a day early and he made the ship go faster, faster than what it maybe should have been going. The people boasted about this great ship, the men, the owners, the man who designed the ship, they were all great people. Great people had built this boat. Great people had designed this boat. This boat is the ship of dreams. There is no ship like it in the whole world. It's unsinkable. Even God could not sink this ship. That's what these men were saying. These men did not realize how powerful God is. They didn't realize that God is the all powerful one, that nothing is impossible with him, that God can do all things. God is the creator of this whole universe. He's the creator of all the oceans, of all the seas, of all the lands, of the stars, of the galaxies, everything about this universe. God created it. God is in control of everything. He's in charge of everything. But God would not sink this ship because the Bible says that everything God does is good. Everything God does is good because he is a good and a loving God. We're now going to sing a song, Never Let Go. Let's sing. To sing a brand new song You opened up my eyes to see You rescued me Rescued me You showed the way when there was no way out Cleared up my mind when you erased all doubt You made me strong when I was weak You rescued me Rescued me
warnings were brought to Captain Smith, six warnings, and he was warned that there were icebergs in the water and it was dangerous and that they needed to slow the ship down. The ship was traveling too fast and the sea was calm and it was still and it was very hard to see icebergs out on the water. But Captain Smith chose to ignore those warnings. They were going to New York. They were going to be there a day early. He couldn't slow this boat down. He ignored the warnings. You know, God gives us warnings in the Bible. God warns us about the danger of sin. Sin is dangerous. Sin will be punished. Sin must be punished by God because God is holy and God is fair. And God must punish the wrong things that are done against him. Lies, stealing, swearing, thoughts of hatred, all those wrong things that people do, God will punish sin. And the punishment for sin is to be far away from God forever, to be lost. And God warns us about sin, but God loves you. God loves you so much. That's why God allowed his son Jesus to be punished on the cross. God planned that his son Jesus would be punished for your sin and for my sin and for the sins of everyone in the whole world. So that if you trust in the Lord Jesus, you will not be lost anymore, but you will be saved. Jesus is looking for you. You can have your sins forgiven. If you're sorry for all the wrong things you have done, trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Ask him to be your saviour. You will be saved and you will have eternal life. And you will not be punished for your sin, but someday you will go to live with Jesus forever in heaven. The Bible says in Romans 10 verse 13, call on the name of the Lord and you will be saved. But Captain Smith ignored the warning signs. Don't be like him. Don't ignore God's warnings in the Bible. He ignored the warning signs and he kept on going, but there was danger ahead because there was a huge iceberg in the water and they couldn't see it because it was so still and it was so dark. People on this boat didn't realise the danger that was ahead of them. They laughed and they had fun and they had games and they drank and they didn't realise that there was great danger, great danger ahead of them. But there was, because up at the very top in the crow's nest of the ship, a sailor could see the iceberg and it was huge. And he began to, to panic and look, look, there's an iceberg. Captain Smith steered the Titanic away from the iceberg as best as he could. And while they didn't hit the iceberg head on, the ship hit the side of the iceberg. It was just like a bump, like a vibration. People on the boat didn't even notice that they'd hit an iceberg. People who were sleeping probably were still sleeping. But there was ice, big chunks of ice falling all over the deck. They had hit the iceberg and the damage was much worse than anyone thought because the iceberg had ripped holes in the side of the ship and the water began pouring into the ship. There was great panic, great panic below deck, in the engine room, in, in the places where, where the men were working, water was pouring in. There were five compartments at the bottom of the Titanic. And Captain Smith knew that if two of those compartments were flooded, it was okay, the Titanic would still float. But the five compartments were filling up with water and Captain Smith and his crew realized that this ship was going to sink. They had about two hours before the Titanic would sink and the closest ship that could help them was hours away. But that wasn't the worst of it. The worst news was to come because on board the Titanic, they had lifeboats, but they didn't have enough. In fact, they didn't even have enough lifeboats for half of the passengers. That meant that half of the passengers on this ship would be lost. They would be drowned in the icy cold water. And at 11.40, the Titanic had hit the iceberg. The staff began to panic and they began to go into people's rooms and tell them, quick, quick, you need to wake up. We need to get everyone out on deck. You need to put a life jacket on, put warm clothes on and get ready to get into a lifeboat. 
You know, it was only the rich people who were given first place in the lifeboats. They were the people who would be able to go on the lifeboat first. They were the people who would be rescued first. You know, that's not like Jesus because Jesus came to rescue all people from sin. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter how good you are. It doesn't matter what country you live in or what language you speak. Jesus loves all people. Jesus came to rescue all people. He's not willing that anyone should be lost. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. Well, people started to go up onto the deck and they were panicking, putting on their life jackets. The women and the children got to go first from the first class onto the first uh, lifeboats that were getting ready to, to be lowered down into the water and to sail away from the ship. At the bottom of the deck were the third class people. They were the people who were poor and where they were sleeping and staying, the water was pouring into their rooms and they began to panic and run as fast as they could up onto the deck, bringing their women, bringing the children with them. But what about John? What about Nana? Well, you'll have to wait the next time to find out what was going to happen to them. We're now going to play a game called Land, Sea and Air. The middle is going to be sea and over here is going to be land and over here is going to be air. Yeah, like if someone calls it out, you have to go to it. But the last person there is out. Okay, I'll call out the Land, Sea, Air. Is everybody ready? Yeah. Land. Sea. Air. Sea. Land. Sea. Land. Air. Sea. Land. Air. Sea. Land. Okay, Matthew, you're right. Brilliant. Okay, guys, just between you two. See? See? Land. See? 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 Air. See? Land. See? Air. See? Land. See? Air. See? Air. Land. Sea, air, sea, land. <laughs> oh, Faith, you're right. Well done, Caleb, you're the winner. It's our quiz time. Question one, where did John Harper live and what was his job? Question number two, why did John Harper go on the Titanic? Question number three, where was the Titanic built? The good news club back today is, do you know Titanic when it was one of the White Star Line three sister ships, Titanic, Olympic and Britannic? Have you been enjoying club so far? What about you, Charlie? Have you been enjoying club? Yeah. Very good. Have you got a jump for us, Charlie? Yeah. Oh, what is it? Why did the burger win the race? I don't know. Do you know the answer? Why did the burger win the race? What is the answer, Charlie? Because he was fast food. <laughs> Very good. Did you get that one? <laughs> well, we're going to sing a song now called Million Reasons. Oh, a minion? Minion Reasons? No, Charlie. Not a minion? Not a million reasons, but a million reasons. Because we've got a million reasons to thank God. And one of those reasons is how God is able to rescue us from sin. Thank you, God, for saving me. Thank you, God, for saving me. Rescue from the middle of the ocean deep. Rescue from the middle of the ocean you set my feet on solid ground. You set my feet on solid ground. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Everything I have, I owe it all to you. For everything you are and all you do, Lord, I can write a book to every single page with a million.
I wonder, have you ever lost anything? I'm going to tell you a story about something that happened to me a couple of months ago back in May. I had taken my dog buddy to the beach for a walk and there's a bit of a path through a forest you have to walk to before you get to the beach. And whenever we got there, we sat down on a sandy slope and we were enjoying the sunshine and buddy really likes to dig holes when he gets to the beach. So he was digging his hole and there was sand flying everywhere. And after a while, I decided it was time to head home. So I looked on the ground to make sure I had everything with me. So I had my buddy's lead, I had buddy, I had my phone, but there was something missing. I didn't have my car key and I started to get really worried. And I thought to myself, oh, buddy must have buried it when he was digging his hole. So I started digging through the sand as fast as I could, but I couldn't find it in the sand. So I started walking along the path and I hoped maybe I would, I had dropped it on the path on my way there. And I was talking to God and I was asking him to help me find my key. And there it was. 15 minutes later in the middle of the path and no one had picked it up and I was so happy and glad and excited to have found the key which I had lost. The Bible talks about something being lost. It says that Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. It says this in Luke chapter 19 verse 10 and I'm going to read it out here now. It says, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. Let's say it all together and we'll start by saying the verse the Bible says in Luke chapter 19, verse 10, after three. One, two, three. The Bible says in Luke chapter 19, verse 10, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. The Bible is talking about us being lost. We are born lost from God. Now, this doesn't mean God doesn't know where you are. God knows everything. He knows exactly where you are right now. We're lost in a different way. We are lost in sin. Sin is disobeying God and we are all born with this problem of sin, wanting to live our own way and not God's way. You see, God hates sin. He can't be near sin. He is perfect and sin separates us from him. And because God is a fair God, he must punish sin. And that means to be separated from him forever after this life in an awful place called hell. Maybe you've said unkind words to your brother or sister or someone in your house over lockdown. Maybe you've sent a mean text to your friend about someone. Or maybe you've lost your temper. This is sin. God's word says that we should love one another and always be kind to each other, even if they really annoy you. Maybe you would rather spend time watching TV or playing games on a tablet than spend time reading God's word and talking to him. This is putting other things before God and God says this is sin. There are lots of other sins that we do and God hates sin. He can't be near it. It separates us from him and means we are lost from him. This makes God very sad. He loves you and he wants you to know him as, his, as your father in heaven. And he wants to free you from a life of sin. You see, sin will ruin your life. Sin will never make you happy. It will never end well and it only hurts you and those around you when it leads to a sad ending in hell. But the really, really good news is that God has made a way for your sin to be forgiven, for you to be made right with God and to know him as your father in heaven. How exciting, what fantastic news. John Harper in our story today knew this news too. And we find this amazing news in our verse today. Let's say it again. Whenever I hold my hand up here, let's say it really, really loud. Whenever I hold my hand down here, let's say it in a really tiny whisper. After three, one, two, three. 
The Bible says in Luke chapter 19, verse 10, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. Great job. Let's try it again. One, two, three. The Bible says in Luke chapter 19, verse 10, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. Fantastic. You see, God made a way for us to be saved from our sin by sending the Son of Man. I wonder who that is. The Son of Man is Jesus, God's only Son. You see, God saw us ruining our lives with sin, lost from him, not caring about him. And we deserve to be punished for that and be separated from him in that awful place called hell. He could have let us continue that way. We had chosen not to care about God and ruin our lives. But the amazing thing is that even when we didn't care about God, he cared about us. He didn't just care, he loved us. And he loves us with a love we can't even begin to imagine. So much that he gave up his son, Jesus. Jesus is perfect. He has no sin. But Jesus died on a cross and he took the punishment you and I deserve instead of us. He didn't have to, but he chose to die and be separated from his father whom he loved. It would have been unimaginably horrible, but he did it because he loves you so, so, so much. He died for the lost, you and I, so that we could be saved, like it says. Let's say it together again. Um, and this time there's going to be some missing words. I wonder if you can remember them. After three, one, two, three. The Bible says in Luke chapter 19, verse 10, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. Fantastic. Now John Harper knew this amazing news. He had once been lost, but Jesus had saved him from his sins. As he walked the streets of Scotland, I'm sure his heart broke when he saw people around him living their own way, ignoring God and lost in their sin like he had once been. So he told them the good news. He told them that Jesus had died for them and that he could save them from their sins. He told them they must realize that they are sinners and that and they must ask the Lord Jesus to forgive them and choose to follow him. Boys and girls, I wonder, have you done the same thing? Have you realized that you're lost in your sin? Have you asked the Lord Jesus to forgive you? Have you chosen to follow him? I was 10 when I trusted the Lord Jesus to forgive me for my sin. I have been lost in sin, but he saved me. And now I know him as my father in heaven. I know he has a plan for my life and he helps me to live for him each day. I know my home is in heaven and I'm so excited to spend forever in heaven with him. He can do this for you too. Okay, so we're just going to say the verse one more time um, after three. One, two, three. The Bible says in Luke chapter 19, verse 10, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. John Harper and his wife were Christians. They loved God and they lived in Scotland. They prayed together and read the Bible together. John Harper was a preacher. They were telling each other that they were going to have a baby. <laughs> John Harper's wife got really sick and she died. John Harper still believed in God. They had a baby called Nana. They got a ticket from America to go to Chicago in America. He was telling the people that he was leaving. In Belfast, they were making a ship called RMS Titanic. That was the biggest ship in that time. In Belfast, people were bo tr boarding the Titan RMS Titanic. They caught the ribbon so the ship could leave. In Southampton, the ship was being loaded with John Harper and Nana and he brought his sister aboard with her. <coughs> Cap 
suspected Edward John Smith was the captain. They were all boarded up. And Cherbourg, they were loading up. And the crowds of people were all boarding. In Queenstown, it was the same. And they were ready to leave to New York. This is Thomas Andrews, the ship designer. Captain Smith got iceberg warnings, but he annoyed them to, to go at full speed to break the speed record there. Soon there was an iceberg. They hit the iceberg. Well, thank you for joining into our club today. Thank you everybody for joining in. Oh, and you have and you have to find out in the next one what happens to John and Nana Harper. Yes, you're gonna have to come back to our next club and find out the rest of the story. Okay, bye. bye.